Hi, I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. Sapphire's Colour Fuse has been a secret weapon for people wanting to add a final finished look to their images. It's deceptively simple to use and even with the built-in options offers almost infinite choice for how you finish your shot. In this short tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick look about how to use the effect and what my strategies are for getting unique and suitable looks every time. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, but the techniques I'm going to be showing you are universal regardless of whichever host you're using Color Fuse in. But Resolve has a couple of ways of applying effects, so I thought it's quite interesting to, uh, to see us in Resolve here. Now the first place we can put in our Color Fuse is in the Edit page. So if I just open up my effect here, I'm going to search for Color Fuse, and I'll just apply it directly to the clip. And we can come in and see in the inspector that we have a very straightforward interface. It's really five things that we have to worry about. We have the three slots and sliders for choosing how our look is going to be. Why are we using Color Fuse? Well, Color Fuse is a way to create the final look in a sort of very simple and versatile way. Now, if we click on load preset up here, you'll see that we have a large number of custom presets to uh, to start off with and at time of recording the OFX version of Sapphire doesn't update the preset browser viewer when we look through our different presets so this is why the naming convention the thumbnails and the description up in the top right hand corner are so important for us and in fact I'll make the thumbnails a little bit bigger here and the names of the presets are basically broken into four different areas. We have BW, when we're talking about black and white film. We have C, when we're talking about color film emulation. I'm gonna zoom all the way down to S, and these are our stylized looks. And anything that says BW, C, or S is just based off of a single LUT. And if I click on any of these and take a little look at the description in the right hand corner, you can see that this is a stylized vintage look that adds a bit of contrast whilst lifting the shadows. Skin tones are pushed towards magenta pink, reduce strength to fit your own footage. So all of these have some good descriptive words inside the, uh, the actual description. Moving into the middle now, we have one other prefix and that's M. And M are mixes of different LUTs. So if we look at in the morning, this description is cooler stylized look that gives you the feeling of early morning sun. Control the punchiness of the look with the LUT3 strength. And I can also filter this by version number. So if we only want to see the newest presets, we can just uh, filter it in the top left hand corner there. Now I'm looking for a vintage tone. So I could look at something like faded memories or maybe even like uh, morning mist. So this is a soft vintage look. Colors are slightly muted and shadows slightly deepened. So let's load this one in. And then we can now adjust the strength of this just with the, uh, the single slider because morning mist based off a single slider. But what if you want to go beyond the presets and mix up a custom cocktail? Well, let's do exactly that. So if I click on the first LUT button, I'm gonna see my Explorer or Finder and we should be led to the LUTs folder that's installed with Sapphire. And I'm going to take a quick look at the naming convention, because if you're just coming new to this, you know, you might be a bit overwhelmed by all of the choices that we have here. Now, let's look first at the color film. You'll see that some of these have a normal version of the film and then an expired version of the film as well. And what this means is that these looks have been based off of different samples of film stocks. And as film goes past its uh, best before date and becomes expired film, the chemistry starts to change as well. So we do get a different look between these two, for example. I'm gonna come down to the bottom as well and take a look at all of these ones that say vintage. And these stylized vintage LUTs are trying to give us a feel of either a particular camera type or a particular time period. And these are often mixed because they're stylized. These are often mixed quite hard. We only need like a little bit of it to, um, to give us the look that we're actually after. Okay, if we move on to the next shot, I'll just show you how we can do this within the color page. 
It's important when we're using color fuse to use it at the right stage of the process. Here we have an image that hasn't even had like any sort of primary color correction done to it. So we really want to do that before we add in any sort of look. Uh, I'm not going to do too much with this. I'll just change the brightness and contrast and maybe give us a little bit of saturation in there. So that's the before. And that's the after. So, you know, really we haven't done a lot to this, uh, to this image. I'm going to add another node. And for my effects, I'm going to add in the color fuse place that in there and let's build up a slightly different look on this one now when I'm building up like a custom cocktail and you'll see this quite a lot actually in the uh, the presets that I've made I tend to follow a system I usually start off with the type of film that I want to use here I want to get a, a bit of a sort of menacing look so I'm not going to do too much with the the actual film stock I just think it's important to set the stage for the stuff that we're doing afterwards. So maybe the, the Kodak Portra 400C, just bring that in there. So we don't, don't need a lot of it. And then we'll start to do our work in LUT2 and LUT3. Now under the stylized, we have something that's called hot horror. Wherever we have something hot or wherever we have something cool, we know what kind of direction that's gonna be pushing things in. So if I go to hot horror, we know this is going to get uh, a bit warmer. Everything's going to get warmer. Let's pull this one down again and maybe just touch in a little bit here. Let's play that back. That's starting to look nice. So there's the original. And there it is with the color fuse. And there's the, the primary color grade. And there it is with the, the color fuse. And because we've got the space for three custom LUTs, why not use them all? So let's click on this one here. And I often reserve this third space for either doing something interesting with the saturation. So adding in like a black and white film at this point can, um, can help to sort of transform things up a little bit. Uh, let's go with one of those just to show you how, how that works. You know, we just touch the saturation back a little bit, but it also gives a nice sort of subtle change on the contrast as well. Uh, maybe a red filter here, show you that one. But I don't think that's appropriate for what we're trying to, to aim, aim for in this uh, particular instance. So what I'm gonna do is find a, another one of the stylized effects. And I wanna push this slightly in a kind of more green, like fluorescent light looking uh, sort, of, uh, sort of place. And we have a couple in the stylized LUTs that do just that. We have Detroit 1991, green heavy, and we also have dystopian values. So both of these can help to, to push that a bit more green. So this was dystopian values, not sure about that one. So let's have a little look instead at Detroit 1991. And yeah, this is, this is probably where I'm gonna be aiming for. So take a quick look at the before and after on that. So that's with color fuse and without color fuse. I can adjust actually how heavy some of these things are or actually maybe change that out. Maybe that's not the one that I'm after this time. Maybe I go for something like the Eastman color neg. Yeah, I think that that actually works better. So if we play that back, that gives us like a nice custom look that fits in with the uh, the style that we're going for. So it may not be the hugest of changes. I really think that's where Color Fuse actually comes into its own. So you can pull off these film emulation looks and get a stylized result without it getting overblown and, and sort of comic-y in some ways. Let's, let's move on to the next shot. And we're gonna come back into the uh, the edit page for this one. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how we can apply this to a, uh, an adjustment layer as well. And I've put an adjustment layer over the top of the sequence and let's add color fuse to this adjustment layer. Uh, and you'll see as soon as we add something on there, it brings in that, that first initial LUT, which is kind of nice, but let's, let's build up a different look on this one. 
let's move this around so we can see both of these things. As before, I'm gonna start off with my film stock choice. Uh, this time, maybe let's go the Kodachrome 25 Heavy and just take a look at the skin tones because those are the things that I'm really interested in. Because one of the things that has always been at the top of, uh, of our minds when creating these particular looks is to maintain good looking skin tones. You know, these aren't just sort of random uh, LUTs put together. These have, have been created for, you know, working professionals and we need to protect our skin tones. So I actually like the, uh, the Fuji Superior 400 expired here. I'm, I'm turn that up quite high for now and then we'll see how that works out when we start to balance things up. Let's add another one into slot two. And again, this is going to be our stylization area. So this has got a lot of vegetation in it. And I, I want to sort of maybe transform this a little bit, take focus away from the greens. Uh, and we have one that can do that, which is called Dry County. So if I bring Dry County up now, you see we're, we're sucking away the life out of these plants. Arr, look at that. Maybe not take it so far. Let's just take it around about there. Yeah, I like that. And then the final one, I'm going to choose another stylization LUT and I want to give this a bit more of a, uh, a, a pop, a bit of a punch. We have a few like orange and teal looks. So orange and teal blockbuster. Let's just bring this in. It's going to give like a, a big saturated, like subtly contrasted look, a nice, nice blockbuster look. But if we don't want to go that far, we also have things like Technicolor Big Bump, saturated pop film. You know, these are ones that are often used for uh, music videos and TV commercials to, to give a, a nice, a nice sort of color hit. And let's see how that looks across the, across the range. I think maybe actually the Technicolor Big Bump is, is too Technicolor, too big, too bumpy. That's not the one for me. So we'll go with an orange and teal Stark. And hyper stylize that. So off and on. Again, take a look at those skin tones. Other stuff might be transforming around, but those skin tones remain really nice. And let's just play that through. And that look seems to work across the entire sequence. And then we can start to think about grain and other sort of finishing effects at that point. But yeah, that's, that's kind of nice. I like that. So before and after. And if I'm happy with this, I can now save this out as my own preset. Now, the beauty of using color fuse for this type of work is that those preset files are cross host and cross platform compatible. So you can be working on a Windows machine running Resolve and send that out to a Mac uh, using After Effects or Premiere or whatever host you're running Sapphire on. And those are going to talk to each other. So there's, there's no risk of LUTs suddenly going offline, files suddenly going and disappearing. You know, they're all going to be there. And that's a quick look at how I like to use color fuse. So we can use any of those large number of presets as a starting point. And remember that there is a consistent naming convention to help you get acquainted with what these are actually doing. And when I'm putting my own custom ones together, I have like a little checklist that I go through where I put in my film stock first, then the stylization ones afterwards. But of course you can mix that up. There's no you know, hard and fast rules for doing that. I hope that's given you some ideas about how you can start to use Sapphire's Color Fuse. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again very soon. If you want to learn more about Color Fuse, the Sapphire suite of effects, or any of the Boris Effect products, please join us at boriseffects.com. You'll find hours of free training for all of our products, plus the ability to download a free trial to test it out for yourself.